Okay. Hi, Marina. How are you? Hi, Douglas. I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, doing very well. Thank you. I love your glasses, by the way. They're very, very stylish. <laughs> they have little pearls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, very neat. So actually, you are a fashion designer, yeah? Yes. Now, did you do that before you started to write or which came first? What were you doing first? Well, I think all creative people try their hand in many different things. And I started with poetry when I was a teenager. Uh, but then after finishing my ma second master's actually from Lund School of Economics, uh, I was working on such topic that made me feel very passionate about starting a brand which is my second master's, I'm a marketing specialist. So I really wanted to start a brand, but having no technical knowledge, uh, the only thing I could do was artistic. And I came up with a, a design, but I was always writing for my brand and I was making up uh, fairy tales about it because every brand has a story. So it was always, this tandem, this dance between fashion, colors, and fairy tales. Uh, we'll get to your book in a second, but I, I'm a little bit curious about fashion and fashion designing because you're the first person I've had on the show who has done that or who is doing that. So if you don't mind, I'd just like to ask you a question or two on that. Um, for somebody who is interested in doing that, what is the avenue to pursue? How, do, how does one do it these days? Like you have an idea, you have clothes that you've, you know, sketched or have in your head or something. Where, where do you go with it? I think it's very important to note that these days tend to change these days so <laughs> very True. much quickly. Yeah. So when, even when I was doing it and it, it wasn't the last century, but with the development of Instagram, I started only when Facebook just launched. Their business model wasn't this big. The the Instagram which wasn't even open yet when I started. So uh, obviously the avenues I took were a little bit more traditional. Yet today, I think there's so many roadblocks with the social media for creative but not very social talent, yet uh, provocative, uh, somebody who's unapologetic, and I'm not being ju ju judgmental, it's different routes that people choose to take. So they have a bigger, uh, maybe, audience that they can uh, approach and possibly sell things to, because at the end of the day, art is art, but you want to make a profit. Well, so like music and like authors and like independent filmmakers, fashion is also gone sort of DIY uh, yes. with your abilities with social media and things. You can just make your own stuff and put it up and hope somebody likes it. Yes, of course. And I actually want to note uh, a very important um, movement that is catching momentum uh, is sustainability and brands that are focusing on recycled and recyclable uh, materials, non-toxic dyes. When we started, China was, and I didn't, you either go to China or for example, you go to Italy or France. So you choose, I went to Italy, uh, in Como, Italy, and uh, either you do low quality and uh, clearly there's a lot of toxicity, there's questions with uh, the work environment, but you, you get a good price. And at the end of the day, before the customer cared uh, for the price, the brand, the image, they didn't care as much not on such scale as today, the the nitty gritty that's going on behind the closed uh, closed door. And today, 
there's there's a new large market emerging where people do care and that is something that's very simple to um that information is easily spread through social media and i think that's that's a very great new channel that should be <laughs> should become a notion <laughs> So has social media helped in in that regard for people who want to start in the fashion industry or has it hurt it? No, I don't think it hurt it. it, it uh, it's a great money saver. And if you know how, mm -hmm. especially before now, it's becoming a little bit more competitive, but uh, it's much cheaper <laughs> or free to reach uh, a customer on social media versus before you had to work with showrooms or advertising um, media agencies that cost thousands of dollars and you had to have the media agency and the showroom so people could come in, mm -hmm. try it on and feel the quality and then you could say, oh, by the way, you know, like the Vogue. Uh, you could see my scars on the cover of the Vogue, and that was very important. Now, I don't think it's as important in sales. Uh, you can send your item to a uh, social media influencer, and that's expensive too, but it has potentially a larger reach and an easy, with one click, you just sell and the Vogue article, you can't click on the article and sell your item. So I think the social media is helping. So you've incorporated your fashion into your book? Well, uh, in, in, in a way, yes. In a way, possibly no. Uh, yes is my uh, accent is not from uh, rural, rural uh, Pennsylvania. It's from... Uh, <laughs> Eastern Europe. Uh, I am Russian. I'm uh, originally from Moscow, oh, and okay. I was always. It, I loved. I was interested. I was fascinated with uh, Eastern European uh, fairy tales and folklore because we grew up on them. We didn't have uh, such access to internet to such beautiful, you know, Disney and other animation. And we had these wonderful, very large, very colorful books. And they were like the Disney of our time, I guess. And I am a mom of four. And when my kids were growing up, I really wanted to share that part of our culture with them and in their school. Mm -hmm. And that's actually how the book came about. I uh, I wrote it for my son's third grade uh, reading parents come in and read to the class well so the book is called uh mashka and mishka yeah <laughs> almost but it's a it's a russian name masha mashka it's like maria and mishka is michael so it's like maria and michael tell us a little bit about the book what's what's the story so the book is about siblings that see each other in the reflection but they can never see themselves until one day they wake up on this magical field with a sinking sun and flying goldfish and they go on this wonderful colorful adventure meeting the the local creatures uh at the end of the adventure they need to find themselves and save uh, the the magical realm from the Hugh Burger that uh, steals the colors in the night. So, what age group is this book geared towards? This is um, for fourth grade, but it's a wonderful read for the parents. Uh, or grandparents to their little kids, or uh, I have some of my friends who have teenage uh, kids and they have a wonderful time uh, reading this book. The language is, is quite uh, simple, but the imagery and the adventures are very stimulating and fun. Okay, I know you got the book there. Can you, you wanna hold it up? Yep. Like. Uh. 
Yeah, okay. That's a bunch of, um, that's the floors and the skyscraper oh, city. Nice. <laughs> Who did all the animation for the book? Animation for the book did a wonderful artist. Uh, her name is Yekaterina, and she is in Germany. Oh, okay. So how long has the book been out? The book has been out for just a couple of months, for about two and a half months, mid-November. Okay. How, is this your first book? This is my first published book, yes. Okay. And you went through a publisher, right? You're not self-published? <laughs> I am self-published. Oh, you are self-published. Okay. Great. So you had to do the whole thing yourself then. Yeah. You had to find the animator and yes. you had to go through the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. No, but that's how the fashion experience really helped me because I had to organize Mercedes-Benz fashion weeks and lookbooks and a lot of materials. So this wasn't, I was prepared. Not as much, sure, but I was prepared. <laughs> okay, so what now? Let's go back to the fashion for a second. Um, what exactly do you make in the fashion? Uh, so originally, it started with um, accessory scarves because my focus was the print. It was very, it is uh, very colorful, and yet there are notes of uh, Eastern European folklore. And then that grew to a complete uh, attire line. Uh, I did many seasons of fashion shows, uh, Mercedes-Benz Russia. I did Miami International Fashion Week, Philadelphia, Atlantic City, and just a lot. It's just the whole total look from scarves to coats, trousers. So you're designing all of it then? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Super. How do you get into those fashion shows? Do you have uh, to audition or do you send in your your portfolios? Yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah? Um, it's a process. And usually uh, the hardest part is to get into the first one because when you get into a fashion show, you can showcase uh, to different fashion shows that you have done this, you were accepted, you went through this process and you are prepared. Uh, the first one is always the hardest, but then it's much easier. Do you bring your own models or do they provide the models for you? Well, it depends on the quality of the show. Uh, for example, um, in Philadelphia Fashion Week, they had their own models. And that was, uh, a, a, it could be a problem for the designer because uh, as a designer that's showcasing a collection that's not mass produced, it's going to be out only in one year. You don't have five different copies of the same attire because uh, you have to showcase at least from 20 to let's say 40 looks. That's about 90 to 100 something uh, garments because the look is a it's a shirt it's a blazer it's pants so you have only one blazer and if you're given a larger model you're not prepared uh and but for example for mercedes fashion week you have what's called ca uh, casting uh you talk to different agencies, they send in the girls, you choose if you like the way they walk, if you like the way they look, maybe you prefer, you know, blondes, maybe you prefer bald, whatever. You can, you are in complete control of your show. Unlike when you're provided models, maybe it doesn't speak, for example, if i doing a line for African-American, uh women and i'm giving only blonde white uh models that's not it, it doesn't really translate it's not going to help my advertising in the future in any way so uh i guess the last question is do you sell your books along with your fashion like do you have a <laughs> a package <laughs> deal <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, a little bundle. I mean, you get a free scarf if you buy 20 books or something. Uh, that's a great idea. I was, um, I, I love organizing uh, events. And when I was promoting my, my fashion, uh, especially locally, in the beginning, I would work with many boutiques and we, have, we would hold champagne, uh, little bundles. But now with coronavirus, everything went virtual and it's very difficult to i haven't um i have a couple of interested uh stores but then again i make uh, uh today people are bo bombarded with with so much choices that you want to limit them for uh you want to help them limit any choices for example they like the book but maybe they don't need a scarf or they don't wear a scarf they don't want a scarf so you can get a book and you can get a scarf. Everything's available on Amazon. Uh, there's not a bundle <laughs> yet. Well, we do have to wrap this up. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Do you have a website that you want to give out? Uh, yes, Douglas, I do have a website. It's um, Marina L. Macron dot Wixsite dot com. Dot Wixsite dot com. OK, super. Marina, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing uh, your book and your fashion. And uh